In mathematics, hyperbolic geometry is a non-Euclidean geometry. In hyperbolic geometry the parallel postulate of Euclidean geometry is replaced with, for any given line R and point P not on R. In the plane containing both line R and point P there are at least two distinct lines through P that do not intersect R. Hyperbolic plane geometry is also the geometry of saddle surface or pseudospherical surfaces, surfaces with a constant negative Gaussian curvature. A modern use of hyperbolic geometry is in the theory of special relativity, particularly Minkowski space time and gyro vector space. When geometers first realized they worked with something else than the standard Euclidean geometry they described their geometry under many different names. Felix Klein finally gave the subject the name hyperbolic geometry. It was for putting it in the now rarely used sequence elliptic geometry, parabolic geometry, and hyperbolic geometry. In Russia it is commonly called Lobachevskian geometry after one of its discoveries, the Russian geometer Nikolai Lobachevsky. This page is mainly about the two-dimensional or plane hyperbolic geometry and the differences and similarities between Euclidean and hyperbolic geometry. Hyperbolic geometry can be extended to three and more dimensions. See hyperbolic space for more on the three and higher dimensional cases. Properties Relation to Euclidean geometry Hyperbolic geometry is more closely related to Euclidean geometry than it seems. The only axiomatic difference is the parallel postulate. When the parallel postulate is removed from Euclidean geometry the resulting geometry is absolute geometry. There are two kinds of absolute geometry, Euclidean and hyperbolic. All theorems of absolute geometry, including the first 28 propositions of Book 1 of Euclid's elements are valid in Euclidean and hyperbolic geometry. Propositions 27 and 28 of Book 1 of Euclid's Elements prove the existence of parallel, non-intersecting lines. This difference also has many consequences. Concepts that are equivalent in Euclidean geometry are not equivalent in hyperbolic geometry. New concepts need to be introduced. Further, because of the angle of parallelism hyperbolic geometry has an absolute scale, a relation between distance and angle measurements. Lines hyperbolic geometry also has several properties that differ from those of Euclidean geometry. There are at least two distinct lines through a point P not on a line R that do not intersect R, where all lie in one plane. This means that there are through P an infinite number of coplanar lines that do not intersect R. These non-intersecting lines are divided into two classes. Two of them are limiting parallels. They asymptotically approach R. The remainder are called ultraparallel and will eventually diverge from R on both sides of P. The limiting parallels make an angle theta with PB. This angle depends only on the Gaussian curvature of the plane and the distance PB and is called the angle of parallelism. For ultraparallel lines, the ultraparallel theorem states that there is a unique line in the hyperbolic plane that is perpendicular to each pair of ultraparallel lines. In hyperbolic geometry, there is no line that remains equidistant from another. Instead, the points that have all the same orthogonal distance from a given line are on a curve called a hypercycle. Circles and disks in hyperbolic geometry, the circumference of a circle of radius r is greater than let, where is the Gaussian curvature of the plane? Then the circumference of a circle of radius r is equal to, and the area of the enclosed disk is Hypercycles and horocycles in hyperbolic geometry, there is no line that remains equidistant from another. Instead, the points that have all the same orthogonal distance from a given line are on a curve called a hypercycle. Another special curve is the horocycle, a curve whose normal radii are limiting parallel to each other. Through every pair of points there are two horocycles. The centers of the horocycles are the ideal points of the perpendicular bisector of the line segment between them. Three distinct points lie on either a line, a hypercycle, a horocycle, or a circle. The length of the line segment is the shortest length between two points. 
The arc length of a hypercycle connecting two points is longer than that of the line segment and shorter than that of a horocycle, connecting the same two points. The arc length of both horocycles connecting two points are equal. The arc length of a circle between two points is larger. The arc length of a horocycles connecting two points. Triangles unlike Euclidean triangles, where the angles always add up to pi radians. In hyperbolic geometry the sum of the angles of a hyperbolic triangle is always strictly less than pi radians. The difference is referred to as the defect. The area of a hyperbolic triangle is given by its defect in radians multiplied by R2. As a consequence, all hyperbolic triangles have an area that is less than R2 pi. The area of a hyperbolic ideal triangle in which all three angles are zero degrees is equal to this maximum. As in Euclidean geometry, each hyperbolic triangle has an inscribed circle. In hyperbolic geometry, if its vertices lie on an horocycle or hypercycle, a triangle has no circumscribed circle. As in spherical and elliptical, geometry. In hyperbolic geometry the only similar triangles are congruent triangles. Standardized Gaussian curvature. Though hyperbolic geometry applies for any surface with a constant negative Gaussian curvature, it is usual to assume a scale in which the curvature k is minus 1. This results in some formulas becoming simpler. Some examples are the area of a triangle is equal to its angle defect in radians. The length of an arc of an horocycle such that the tangent at one extremity is limiting parallel to the radius through the other extremity is 1. The ratio of the arc lengths between two radii of two horocycles where the horocycles are a distance 1 apart is e. 1. Cartesian-like coordinate systems in hyperbolic geometry rectangles do not exist. Also there are no equidistant lines. This all has influences on the coordinate systems. There are however different coordinate systems for hyperbolic plane geometry. All are based around choosing a point on a chosen directed line and after that many choices exist. The Lobachevsky coordinates x and y are found by dropping a perpendicular onto the x-axis. x will be the label of the foot of the perpendicular. y will be the distance along the perpendicular of the given point from its foot. Another coordinate system measures the distance from the point to the horocycle through the origin centered around and the length along this. Horocycle. Other coordinate systems use the Klein model or the Poincare disk model described below, and take the Euclidean coordinates as hyperbolic. Distance construct a Cartesian-like coordinate system as follows. Choose a line in the hyperbolic plane and label the points on it by their distance from an origin point on the x-axis. For any point in the plane, one can define coordinates x and y by dropping a perpendicular onto the x-axis. x will be the label of the foot of the perpendicular. y will be the distance along the perpendicular of the given point from its foot. Then the distance between two such points will be this formula can be derived from the formulas about hyperbolic triangles. The corresponding metric tensor is in this coordinate system, straight lines are either perpendicular to the x-axis or described by equations of the form where a and b are real parameters which characterize the straight line. History Since the publication of Euclid's Elements circa 300 BCE, many geometers made attempts to prove the parallel postulate. Some tried to prove it by assuming its negation and trying to derive a contradiction. Foremost among these were Proclus, Ibn al-Haytham, Omar Khayyam, Nazir al-Din al-Tuzi, Witello, Gersonides, Alfonso, and later Giovanni Gerolamo Sarkeri, John Wallace, Johann Heinrich Lambert, and Legendre. Their attempts were doomed to failure, but their efforts led to the discovery of hyperbolic geometry. The theorems of Al-Hassan, Qayyam and Al-Tuzi on quadrilaterals, including the Ibn al-Haytham Lambert quadrilateral and Qayyam Sakari quadrilateral, were the first theorems on hyperbolic geometry. 
Their works on hyperbolic geometry had a considerable influence on its development among later European geometers, including Witello, Gersonides, Alfonso, John Wallace and Sarkari. In the 18th century, Johann Heinrich Lambert introduced the hyperbolic functions and computed the area of a hyperbolic triangle. 19th century developments In the 19th century, hyperbolic geometry was explored extensively by Jano Spolier, Nikolai Ivanovich Lobachevsky and Carl Friedrich Gauss. Other than the predecessors, who just wanted to eliminate the parallel postulate from the axioms of Euclidean geometry, Gauss, Bollier and Lobachevsky realized they had discovered a new geometry. Gauss wrote in an 1824 letter to Franz Taurinus that he had constructed it, but Gauss did not publish his work. Gauss called it non-Euclidean geometry, causing several modern authors still consider non-Euclidean geometry and hyperbolic geometry to be synonyms. Lobachevsky published in 1830, while Bollier discovered it independently and published in 1832. In 1868, Eugenio Beltrami provided models of hyperbolic geometry and used this to prove that hyperbolic geometry was consistent if and only if Euclidean geometry was. The term hyperbolic geometry was introduced by Felix Klein in 1871. Klein followed an initiative of Arthur Cayley to use the transformations of projective geometry to produce isometries. The idea used a conic section or quadric to define a region, and used cross-ratio to define a metric. The projective transformations that leave the conic section or quadric stable are the isometries. Klein showed that if the Cayley absolute is a real curve then the part of the projective plane in its interior is isometric to the hyperbolic plane. For more history, see article on non-Euclidean geometry, and the references Coxeter and Milnor. Philosophical consequences The discovery of hyperbolic geometry had important philosophical consequences. Before its discovery many philosophers viewed philosophical rigor in terms of the geometrical method, referring to the method of reasoning used in Euclid's elements. Kant in the critique of pure reason came to the conclusion that space and time are not discovered by humans as objective features of the world, but are part of an unavoidable systematic framework for organizing our experiences. It is said that Gauss did not publish anything about hyperbolic geometry out of fear of the uproar of the Boeotians, which would ruin his status as Princeps Mathematicorum. The uproar of the Boeotians came and went, and gave an impetus to great improvements in mathematical rigor, analytical philosophy and logic. Hyperbolic geometry was finally proved consistent and is therefore another valid geometry geometry of the universe because Euclidean, hyperbolic and elliptic geometry are all consistent. The question arises, which is the real geometry of space, and if it is hyperbolic or elliptic, what is its curvature? Lobachevsky had already tried to measure the curvature of the universe by measuring the parallax of Sirius and treating Sirius as the ideal point of an angle of parallelism. He realized that his measurements were not precise enough to give a definite answer, but he did reach the conclusion that if the geometry of the universe is hyperbolic, then the absolute length is at least one million times the diameter of the Earth's orbit. Some argue that his measurements were methodologically flawed. Henry Poincaré, with his sphere world thought experiment, came to the conclusion that everyday experience does not necessarily rule out other geometries. The geometrization conjecture gives a complete list of eight possibilities for the fundamental geometry of our space. The problem in determining which one applies is that, to reach a definitive answer, we need to be able to look at extremely large shapes, much larger than anything on Earth or perhaps even in our galaxy. Geometry of the universe Special relativity places space and time on equal footing, so that one considers the geometry of a unified space-time instead of considering space and time separately. Minkowski geometry replaces Galilean geometry. 
in relativity, rather than considering Euclidean, hyperbolic and elliptic geometries, the appropriate geometries to consider a Minkowski space, the Sitter space and anti du Sitter space. The space of relativistic velocities has a three-dimensional hyperbolic geometry, where the distance function is determined from the relative velocities of nearby points. Hyperbolic plane geometry is the geometry of saddle surfaces. Hyperbolic plane geometry is the geometry of saddle surfaces with constant negative Gaussian curvature. By Hilbert's theorem, it is not possible to isometrically immerse a complete hyperbolic plane in a three-dimensional Euclidean space. There exist various pseudospherical surfaces that have a finite area of constant negative Gaussian curvature. Physical realizations of the hyperbolic plane. The hyperbolic plane is a plane where every point is a saddle point. By Hilbert's theorem, it is not possible to isometrically immerse a complete hyperbolic plane in a three-dimensional Euclidean space. There exist various pseudospheres in Euclidean space that have a finite area of constant negative Gaussian curvature. Other useful models of hyperbolic geometry exist in Euclidean space, in which the metric is not preserved. A particularly well-known paper model based on the pseudosphere is due to William Thurston. The art of crochet has been used to demonstrate hyperbolic planes with the first being made by Dinah Taimina. In 2000, Keith Henderson demonstrated a quick-to-make paper model dubbed the hyperbolic soccer ball. Instructions on how to make a hyperbolic quilt, designed by Hellerman Ferguson, has been made available by Jeff Weeks.